Welcome to day three of my seven day prayer challenge, where we are digging deeper into the power of prayer and how it can transform our lives. Today, we are going to explore God's peace through Philippians 4, 6. I talked about that yesterday. We all know what it's like to feel overwhelmed, anxious, and stressed out, whether it's dealing with a tough situation at work, maybe you have a health crisis going on, or it's just that daily grind of people's lives, and that can be so chaotic. And in those moments, it's so easy to feel like peace is the last thing on our mind. So we might try to find it in temporary escapes like Netflix binges or social media scrolling, but deep down, we know that's not the kind of peace that lasts. Many of us struggle to find peace because we're trying to control everything ourselves. That's me. We think that if we can just work harder, plan better and be more perfect, I'll finally be at peace. But the truth is, that's a myth. We can't control everything. And even when I think I've got it all together, life can still throw me a big old curveball. And then there are the times when we really do turn to God, but we're really not sure how to pray or what to say. We might feel like our prayers are just bouncing off the ceiling and we're left feeling frustrated and unsure. Is God even listening to me? So how can we find peace in the midst of all this uncertainty? Philippians 4, 6 tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This verse doesn't promise us a life free from problems, but it is promising us that peace goes beyond human understanding. The key word here is petition. So it's not just about bringing our requests to God, but also about being persistent and consistent in our prayer lives. You know, it's about developing a rhythm of prayer that helps us stay connected to God, even when life gets crazy. And when we do that, we start to experience a peace that's not dependent on our circumstances around us, but on our connection with God. I remember when a time when I was going through a really tough season in my life, I had been laid off from my recruiting job about four months after 9-11. And in fact, I worked in downtown DC and was only like five miles from the Pentagon bombing. Like that was the worst horrible day. Everyone was still struggling months later with what had happened to America and no one was hiring. They were laying off. So there was no need for recruiters, which is what I was. So I began a job search, but as the months passed every month, it was clear to me I was gonna to have to change directions. There was no jobs for recruiters and I had to find a job in a totally different skill set. So recognizing that I wouldn't make the same kind of money by switching directions, plus my pride and having to accept any job to earn money to provide for my family, that was so devastating. You know, but during those months, I turned to God like I had never done before and I began praying like I had never prayed before. I poured out my heart to him and I just asked him for peace to guard my heart and my mind. It wasn't easy and it wasn't instant, but as I continued to pray and seek God, I started to feel a sense of peace that I had never felt before. It was like this weight had been lifted off my shoulders and I could start to breathe again. And I figured out that he would, oh, he would provide for me, but only if I trusted him. And that's what I want for you today. I want you to experience that same peace, no matter what you're going through. Let's recap what we've learned today. So the first thing we talked about was we, we've seen that finding God's peace, while it's possible, even in the most turbulent of times, 
we've learned that prayer is a powerful tool for accessing that peace of God. And we learned that Philippians 4, 6 is a beautiful promise of God's presence in our lives. And you have this reassurance, no matter what you're facing, God is with you and he wants to give you peace. Well, let's dive into Philippians 4, 6. I want to open us in prayer. And you know what? I'm gonna, how we're going to open in prayers? I'm going to open us in prayer. I'm going to read that verse again because we could spend hours and days and days on this. Let's just refresh our hearts and minds. Father, thank you for this opportunity on day three for us to talk about one of the most important aspects and thoughts that Paul shares with us about who you are and what does it mean for us to be in you and live in you. Paul told us that we are re to rejoice in you always. And he tells us again, rejoice. He tells us to let our gentleness be evident to everyone. We know you're near, Father. And you've told us, do not be anxious about anything but in prayer, but in everything, by prayer and petition. And then with thanksgiving, to present my request to you. And the peace of God, only your peace, Father, will transcend all understanding, guard my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. So that verse is so powerful. So in the list, I had a verse, just verse six, but here we go again. You're going to always hear me say this. You have to go back and look at the verses before, prior, and then a little bit after. And this is just the most powerful one of the most powerful paragraphs in the entire um, New Testament. So what I've done today is I have chosen this tag that's so pretty, and I'm going to use this little clipper thing to put all my notes together. And I went ahead and did a, um, a punch and put a, yeah, what is that, metal circle thing? Anyway, and then I just added some buttons because I wanted some buttons to, like, go in here. So uh, on the back of it, I cut out of the uh, paper. Hold on. Sorry about that phone call. Okay, where was I? Um, I was explaining to you that I used the piece of vellum where I print the Bible verses on that one page. And I cut out the topic for today, which is God's peace through prayer. And then I already attached the reflection prayers, the anecdote to anxiety, bringing us peace as we trust God with our needs. And obviously I put the verse on the front. So let me set the vellum aside. And let's look at what we can learn about this Philippians. So I'm going to set this aside. We're going to pull my Bible over here a little bit more. As I said, this is my NIV Life Application Study Bible that I'm going to, and you can, you can see all my notes in there. Oh, no, you can't. There you go. My pink and I write it. So let's see, 1113, I dated something in there. Uh, 524, when I was doing the Peace of God study, which I'm go I'll say it now. I wrote a Peace of God God study back in um, April, May, and I have a ton of videos. Um, it was with a, a group of women. We did this study, and it was phenomenal. So if you want to do another Bible study after this one, go into the peace of God. It is just fantastic. Um, and then today, so let's, as I mentioned, let's go what was before verse 6 and what's after. So let's read that again. Re verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. And then he says, let your gentleness be evident to all because the Lord is near. And then the verse we're focusing on, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And then after that, he here's the promise, right? So the command is in verse 6, right? Do not be anxious. He's commanding us. Then the promise is, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Okay? So, that's what the actual verse is. Let's look at some commentary. So, one of the things that I wanted to just read and share with you, because, again, when you read this, you, have to under, you always have to understand the context. Who said what, when, where, why? 
Okay, so it might seem strange that a man in prison would be telling a church to rejoice. So you have to understand, Paul is in prison when he's writing this letter and, and talking. So he's he has an attitude that teaches us an important lesson. Our inner attitudes do not have to reflect our outward circumstances. That's the key to this whole verse. Paul was full of joy because he knew that no matter what happened to him, Jesus Christ was with him. Several times in this letter, Paul urged the Philippians to be joyful, probably because they needed to hear this. It's easy to get discouraged about unpleasant circumstances. If you haven't been joyful lately, you may not be looking at life from the right perspective. And that's what we just talked about earlier in, in my introduction when I was sharing all that. Yes, all that stuff happens, and that's the external circumstances that we live in, right? So the key here for verse um, uh, 4 and 5 is that ultimate joy comes from Christ dwelling within us. So if you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're really never going to get that joy. You're not going to get that peace either. Because Christ is near to us, and at his second coming, we will fully realize this ultimate joy. We just get a little taste of it here on earth, and we can't even comprehend it anyway. He who lives within us will fulfill his final purposes for us. And so then in 5, he says, let your gentleness be known. So like, why is that important? Well, we are to be gentle, which could be said as reasonable, fair-minded, charitable, those types of things, right? Because um, to those outside the church, not just to fellow believers, because this means we are not to seek revenge against those who treat us unfairly, nor are we to be overly vocal about our personal rights. Okay, one of the things, um, here I wrote, I went and looked up, joy and I added some more things in my notes. So I wrote in verse four, we are urged to be joyful regardless of the circumstances. Change my perspective, Diane. Joy is a choice. Now, biblical joy is choosing to respond to external circumstances with inner contentment and satisfaction because I know that God will use my experiences to accomplish his work in my life. He alone is the true or origin of joy. He alone. I don't have to produce it, nor do I have to try and drum it up on my own. God himself is the true source of joy. God alone produces true joy in my life as the fruit of living for him. Remember the fruit of the spirit, right? So then verse five, I wrote, um, we are to show a gentle disposition to all gentleness. Guess what? That's another fruit of the spirit. And God can produce that in us if we live in him trust him, and give up our self-control. Well, if you're a self-controlling person like me, that can be very difficult. But when I do, it's wonderful. Okay, verse 6. Um, basically, verse 6 is kind of the living prayer life. And as I just mentioned, it's a command, right? Be anxious for nothing. Why is that? Because he is the father of my life and I am his child. This is an area of God's. I cannot interfere in that. And then he says, in everything, right, this is the proper subject of prayer. No area of my life is not a concern to God. Nothing. Okay, and then he says, present your requests, <clears throat> excuse me, in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Okay, let's look at that. So, but in everything by prayer. Prayer meaning all my communication with God, okay, supplication or petition, that means um, directly asking God to do something. And then with thanksgiving, we are to let our requests be made known. Because God already knows all my prayer requests before I pray them. He knows yours. He will wait for my participation before granting that request. And then with thanksgiving, do not have a whiny, complaining spirit before God when we make our request known. Okay. So, verse 7, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Okay, so I went over to Blue Letter Bible, and you know I love that, and go to um, David Guzik's commentary. And verse 7 is the, it's the promise. Remember I just said about the promise of peace. Well, the Bible describes three aspects of peace that relate to God. So, first is the peace from God. Okay, 
This describes the relationship that we enter into with God through the finished work of Jesus Christ. Here we go again, another black and white. Either you have recognized and turned your life over and Jesus is your Lord and Savior or not. If, he, if he's not, you're really not going to get that peace from God. You can try and get it in lots of places on the earth. And we all know that doesn't work. Then there's the peace with God. Okay, this describes my relationship that I enter into God through the finished work of Jesus Christ, that I believe Jesus died on the cross for me, for all sinners, and he rose again, right? So that's the relationship that I have. And then we have the peace of God. So remember, peace from God, peace with God, the peace of God, three versions of peace. And um, the peace of God is... Uh, it's beyond all, all of our, we can't even understand this. That's what you just have to understand. We are humans. We just do not know. It's beyond the power of our thinking. Okay. Then I love when he talked about, but what is God's peace? And he gave this quote from Spurgeon, the unruffled serenity of the infinitely happy God, the eternal composure of the absolutely well-contented God. Isn't that, that's, well, could I ever say that about myself? No, I would never say that I'm well contented. I I have times in my life where I'm contented, but then I have other times where I don't. Well, anyway, it is beyond our ability to understand. And if you keep reading, this peace guards your heart and minds in Christ Jesus. So it's a protection. So it's a feeling and it's a protection and... That's where we're supposed to live and where we want to be. Well, I hope you got a lot out of this. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you're using Blue Letter Bible Outdoor Auto Work. I hope you're looking at commentaries. Just a little bit of time that I spend reading and then writing all these notes is just, it's so precious. It's absolutely precious. And it changes my whole attitude for the rest of the day. Well, thanks for joining me on this journey. I'm like so happy that you are, and I want to hear from you in the comments below. The main question I want to ask you today, and please tell me, have you ever experienced God's peace in a challenging situation? Like I shared with you about losing my job. Like, have you ever had that kind of an experience, and what was it like? Please share, because, you know, when you write your comments, other people see your comments. So in that sense, we're kind of like a little community, right? So share your story. And then let's continue to encourage each other on this journey of prayer. And again, that's when we make comments on my YouTube channel. So don't forget to tune in tomorrow. We'll be on day four of our seven-day prayer challenge. And tomorrow we're going to be exploring more insights on the power of prayer.